Endeavour Houston, we see a nominal Miko. Welcome to space. Spacecraft require a lot of power. They have to communicate, navigate, and conduct delicious science. To get this power, a lot of spacecraft would use solar panels. Think about the International Space Station. It's got these massive solar panels. Or Hubble, it's got these solar panels. But sometimes solar panels just won't cut it. You could be on the surface of Mars, for instance, where dust storms could block out the sun, causing you to die. Rest in peace, Oppie. Or you could be super far out in the solar system where the sun's light is really weak and we couldn't generate any meaningful power from it. In these circumstances, we need to turn to the nuclear option, plutonium, using a radioisotope thermal electric generator, or RTG. Plutonium is really useful because if we zoom in and have a look at the atom, it's really big and it's unstable. It likes to decay, spitting off an alpha particle, turning into a uranium atom. In this process, it gives off heat. This is because we have to respect Einstein's law, E equals mc squared, energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. This plutonium atom weighs more than the uranium and this alpha particle that was spat out. That's because mass was lost when this decay happened. That mass was lost because that mass turned into energy. And we take the mass that was lost, multiply it by the speed of light squared, so we get a small amount of mass loss and a huge amount of energy released. And that energy is heat. With an absolutely insane number of atoms in a chunk of plutonium undergoing this decay, you can quite easily imagine that that chunk of plutonium is going to be quite warm. Now the challenge is converting that heat into electricity that we can use to power our spacecraft. To do that, we are going to be using a thermocouple. Thermocouples utilize the thermoelectric effect. That means essentially just directly transferring heat energy into electrical energy. We do this by getting a chunk of a material called a semiconductor. This semiconductor will only allow electrons to flow in this direction. But how do we get the electrons to flow? Well, we have to think of what happens to a material when it's warm. Particles in any material when they're warm will vibrate depending on how warm it is. If you warm it up, those particles will jiggle around more. So we see when we put our semiconductor up to our block of plutonium, we're going to have a warm end and we'll have a cooler end. At the warm end, these negatively charged electrons are going to be jiggling about a lot, but at the cold end, not so much. Because of this, these electrons will push their way down to this end of the block of semiconductor. As a result, this end will become negatively charged. And so, kind of like a battery, we'll have a positive end and a negative end. One more along, we'll have another semiconductor, which will only allow positive charges to move. And so, the positive charges will move down in the same way that the electron did in the previous one. And we get a positive end and a negative end. And we do the same over and over again until we can hook these up. Negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, and we get a whole bunch of these together in contact with our plutonium. And so it's kind of like a battery again, with this negative and positive end that we can get meaningful power from to conduct experiments and operate our spacecraft. So that's the nuclear option used by many spacecraft. It's simply space. Now there is a recommended video and the subscribe button waiting for you in the Space Shuttle's payload bay. I will see you later.